What's up everybody, it's Sean here, back today to give you another New Balance review. So today, we'll be taking a look at the general release New Balance 2002R in this phantom and magnet colorway. Today's video is brought to you by Hefalux. Hefalux is my all-time favorite sneaker insoles, and they sell ETPU insoles, which essentially is the same material you'll find in Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website, which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushioning setup you're looking for, you're going to find there's a suitable insole for everyone. So I've been a paying customer of Hefalux for years now, and to me, I personally find them to be very comfortable. So if you guys want to check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and get 15% off your entire purchase. So I just want to give you guys a heads up, the next few videos I'll be posting are all part of that same New Balance 2002 art collection that we recently received here in Canada. So to put it bluntly, it'll be pretty much the exact same video, with the major difference between the pairs being of course the colors. But for anyone sticking around watching all the videos, I really really appreciate your love and support. So this is the New Balance 2002R in the Phantom and Magnet colorway. Style code is M2002RHO, and these recently arrived here in Canada on NewBalance.ca, as well as some of our boutiques as well. So these retailed for 170 Canadian dollars. So I suspect when or if these arrived in the US, they should retail for 140 USD. And originally when these dropped a few months ago, these were rumored to be maybe an Asia exclusive, but Canada and now I believe Europe as well received this, so I'd be very surprised if these weren't a worldwide release. So my initial thoughts when I got this in hand was that they look a lot lighter and a lot more washed out and vintage than they look in pictures. So I'm comparing this to the newbounds.ca stock photos where they look a lot more black, but in real life the whole shoe is very faded and it's much more of a vintage looking dark grey. So diving into the details, the base layer of the shoe on the toe box, this is covered in this dark grey colored mesh. We have this reflective silver 3M right above this in the middle with the New Balance N logo, as well as on the medial edge, and then overlaid on either side, we have a very soft dark grey colored nubuck. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this brushed vintage looking suede, and this same suede covers the mid panel of the shoe as well. The top two eyelets are done in this TPU finish in this dark grey colour, and then underneath this we have the New Balance N logo, which is constructed out of a reflective silver 3M panel with a sail coloured leather underneath. Moving downwards surrounding the ankle collar area, we have more of that same mesh that we saw earlier on the toe box, and then we have this new buck overlay on top with 2002R branding found on the lateral side. Underneath this we have more of that suede which wraps around the back of the shoe, and this bottom panel is perforated. And then in the middle we have this triangular shaped cutout, revealing this TPU overlay with New Balance branding. And then the top of the heel is covered in another panel of reflective silver 3M. As for the laces, so these only come with one lace option, and they're just your standard flat style lace done in a sail color. Underneath this, the tongue is primarily constructed out of a mesh material, but we have this dark grey coloured nubuck overlay, along with this washed out black suede at the very top, and there's this oval shaped cutout on the top, revealing the New Balance running branding in the center. Taking out the insoles, these come with their standard foam line 2002R insole and it's lined in a black colored textile on top. And stamped on the heel, of course, we have New Balance running branding. So the upper of the 2002R sits atop this Absorb and Absorb SPS foam midsole. The midsole is painted in this very vintage looking yellowed color, so it almost looks like this is a 30 year old shoe that's been kept in pristine condition. In addition to the Absorb and Absorb SPS, they also incorporate New Balance Energy technology, and this is visible on the lateral side of the heel with these gel-like pillars which helps with impact protection and shock absorption. And then turning the shoe over to the bottom, here we have your outsole which is done in this solid dark grey coloured rubber. We have these flex grooves on the forefoot to give you added flexibility, and then in the middle we have this vintage looking yellowed coloured TPU plate, which is what New Balance calls their stability web technology, and this helps with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these 2002 R's. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like most of my other 2002 R's, so I would recommend sticking true to size. So I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I wear a size 10 in most of my 2002 R's. And just to give you guys a point of comparison, I also go a half size down in other New Balance silhouettes like the 992, the 990 V3, V4, V5, most of my 550s, and the 998. And in comparison, I usually stick true to size or a size 10 in the 2002R, the 997, the 990 V2 because of its more narrow toe box, along with a lot of the made in UK models like the 1500, the 991, and the 1530. 
Moving on to the comfort, so again, I sound like a broken record, but the 2002R, in my opinion, is one of the most comfortable New Balance shoes on the market. It gives me that perfect balance of step and comfort with the foam underfoot while still being very stable and supportive. So when I know I'm gonna be standing on my feet for many hours in a day, this is definitely a shoe I would recommend. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship, so this is a made in China New Balance shoe, but the quality of the materials were great. I thought the suede felt very buttery, the new buck felt very high quality as well. And in terms of the overall build, there were some loose threads that I had to just trim off myself. But other than that, I thought it was very well put together. Really, there were no major flaws that I could see, so I was very pleased with this in hand. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. While black and white shoes can normally be considered boring by some, I really like how New Balance gave us this vintage twist on this colorway. How they treated the suede giving it that really worn in look, I thought it was a very nice touch. And then to add to that whole aesthetic, they gave us this vintage looking midsole, which I thought really complemented the upper well. And evidently it seems like the people agree with me as well because most sizes of this specific colorway have sold out, whereas the other ones are mostly sitting on the website. So clearly this phantom and magnet colorway is doing something right. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Phantom and Magnet New Balance 2002 R. What are your overall thoughts on this specific colorway? Are you feeling this whole vintage worn in vibe to it? Or are you not a big fan of the vintage look and you prefer more of a true black color? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at sgo8, check me out on Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I helped you in some way and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.